Warning. Censorship. Warning. Censorship. Warning. Censorship. Warning. Censorship. We are back with Rebel Daily live cast with myself, Andrew, and L -L 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 Lewis Brackpool. How are you, young man? I'm not too bad. I'm guessing you've missed me like every single week. How are you? Of course I have. I'm very well, thank you. You look like you're in heaven. You're one of the Backstreet Boys. <laughs> Maybe you're the yeah. architect from the Matrix in the void um, there. Um, I'd love to have a clip of that later, please, Olivia. Lewis Brackpool and myself, we are here with you on Rumble, YouTube, Odyssey, Getter, and Super U, of course. We're looking for your paid chats. Of course, we want to speak to you. Um, if you have something you want to say, a question you want us to answer, or just a comment, um, an insult, a fun joke, something you want us to insults. cover, really anything. Lewis loves the insults. You can send it to us on Rumble, Super U, and Odyssey. Those are the paid chat platforms. Rumble, Rant, Odyssey, Hyper Chat, and Super U. Super messages or something to that <laughs> regard, Lewis. And uh, we appreciate you guys. Rebelnews.com slash livestream is where you can get the best live feed every single day to where we're uploading it. Because sometimes YouTube doesn't like us, Lewis. And the first story... It might be based around not liking people. It's written by yourself. You want to cue this up for everybody? I don't want to step on your toes. It's a very important <laughs> story. Uh, go take uh, it away, Lewis. We're talking about the diversity activists. Uh, we are. Blunder. Um, okay, so diversity activists uh, accuse a primary school teacher, um, DJ, oh, sorry, DJ, not primary school teacher, but a DJ, of blackface to only discover he's actually a black man uh, which is very <laughs> awkward very very awkward um where i wrote the activists were apparently in such a rush to find instances of racism uh, that they neglected to verify that this supposed blackface incident was simply a black man um so yeah if you scroll down to have a little look basically it was a 1970s themed mm -hmm. um party basically an event and uh, this was in Phoenix, in Arizona. I saw this story pop up and I thought, I'm going to have to write about this. This is just, <laughs> you know, a self-own um, by these two diversity activists who took their complaints to the Parents Teacher Association, or PTA, um, of the elementary school. Shortly after seeing photographs of this DJ, uh, Kim <laughs> Coco Hunter, um, and was quickly corrected, um, in fact, that Mr. Hunter is actually black. So uh, a bit of a self-own uh, there by these uh, diversity activists who then tried to defend their point later on, which I wanted to read out. Um, let's have a look. So it says, Roden then doubled down by saying, let me be clear, a black man, apparently in blackface, <laughs> is an entirely different discussion than a white person. <laughs> However, I did not state the person was white. I was assumed that that was my intent, and perhaps it was, but nonetheless, looking on DJ Kim Coco's uh, Hunter's uh, Facebook page, it seems at the very least he is in, a, <laughs> oh he's in darker makeup, if not black-faced, or I am completely mistaken, <laughs> and it's the patio lighting. <laughs> so the geezer completely doubles down on uh on what he uh well he, he made a massive error basically um what are your thoughts on this story uh sir chapados it's not blackface it's black blackface and he's not he's being too black a black guy isn't yeah. allowed to appear darker which is probably not the case did he respond to this uh i believe he did uh, which will read out what he said uh, after being informed of the incident mr hunter replied saying was i not black enough <laughs> um how black do I do I got to be for people to know that I'm an actual black person? <laughs> uh, in their defense, how many chips in the ice cream did you see? Uh, they were probably thinking the same thing I am. Wow, there are no black people here. So, yeah. Um, um, yeah. You know, light-skinned black guys get no love, you know. Um, why even take this chance? If you're not sure if it's a black guy at all, 
why would you even be like, oh, that might be a I white guy, so let's make this claim. And then when, I guess that's a better avenue to go when found out, you, but it's so ridiculous. So now when, if a black guy wants to look slightly darker for a character, which he probably didn't, it doesn't look like it. If we want to bring up that close up again, I don't see any like patches of darker, and this is so stupid to analyze, but like it just goes to show mm. that this person was so desperate to not be proven wrong. Scroll down to the uh, the close up one. I don't see any makeup mm. on his face. No, no, <laughs> it's just it's, it's it's a typical um, activist who's trying to seek uh, racism in absolutely everything. Um, so they they were quick to to make this strange and odd complaint to try and you know be this uh, morally virtuous or morally superior um, <laughs> just activist. It's unbelievable. So. Yeah, a cell phone, and uh, I'll be honest, it made me laugh. So I thought <laughs> I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to write this story. This is, uh, you know, a big cell phone. I don't know what the upside to that is, even if it's, if it were to be true. You catch somebody in blackface, and then what happens? Congratulations, you told this person they were wrong. You have to complain about it. I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and guess that this person doesn't complain about, you know gender queer trans theory being taught but uh i don't know this person i shouldn't make these assumptions that's just a hunch lewis no, brackpool you shouldn't. i shouldn't i won't <laughs> um producer efron is gonna have to never mind <laughs> never mind uh netflix aims to curtail now this is an interesting story coming from netflix because for i guess the past five or six years i think we've all wondered why so many companies have chosen politics over money and it's been happening more and more frequently and if you have certain political views views you can't work with somebody or they drop out of something you know disney's doing it in florida they're making big mistakes there major league baseball big mistakes there and they're usually mm -hmm. wrong but in this case netflix has made a decision that they're now being forced to basically admit that they're wrong they cut off obviously from Russia, they cut off their services there, and if I'm not mistaken, it was 700,000 subscriptions that were in Russia, so they automatically lose whatever $700,000 times $20 per month is um, in Canadian dollars. Um, that's a lot of money, and now they're scrambling, mm. saying we lost too many subscribers. Now, they did make some of that back. I think the article, if we want to throw it up, Olivia says they've lost 200,000 subscribers in total. An unexpectedly sharp drop in subscribers. Well, it should have been expected, uh, considering changes. Mm -hmm. So they want to possibly bring in something that prevents password sharing, which would probably mean it can only be used on the same IP address, and a lower subscription model, which would include ads, which of course everybody would hate, but I guess people who don't want to pay the big bucks would pay for it, but isn't that the reason you get Netflix is to not watch commercials? So its customer base fell by 200,000 sure. subscribers during January and March, and they also predict losing another 200 million or two, <laughs> that'd be a lot, 2 million subscribers in April and the June quarter. Now, if you're worried about this, then why did you cut off 700,000 subscribers? Theoretically, they'd be plus 500,000, plus half a million subscribers uh, than they would have been if they didn't pull out of Russia, now I don't think Russia is going to take them back at this point, Lewis. Um, a year of progressively slower growth has riled Netflix investors. Um, shares plunged by more than 25% in extended trading after Netflix revealed the disappointing performance. Uh, disappointing performance if the stock drops extends into Wednesday. Now, Lewis, is this politics coming back to bite them in the ass? Is it? You know, we there was a huge controversy from their cuties show, and mm -hmm. there's so many things there that are objectionable that they put on. I mean, they seem to defend everybody, to be fair. Like, they didn't kick off Dave Chappelle. They probably would have if it wasn't Dave Chappelle, but they don't seem to be kicking anybody off there. But this strategy of jump in, like, they don't seem to be jumping into the political pool with these other things, but they pulled out of Netflix as a massive virtue signal, and it has backfired on them, would you say? Absolutely. And I think Netflix has is, is been going down this this very strange route uh, for quite a while. Um, very heavy on the diversity front. Um, as we know, you know, uh, 
get woke go broke and all that um and it's just the sheer detestable strange almost agenda that they're sort of pushing towards um their audience essentially obviously we know about um the the controversy with them still streaming uh, cuties to their uh, their platform which i can't believe they're still running it's it's unbelievable it was truly um, a disgusting fact, film it, it truly <laughs> is um and you know for them to you know still stream it on their site after immense backlash um is just absurd really uh oh, i don't know it's, it's it's gotten to the point now where it's becoming extremely unbearable um for a lot of people that just want to want to even use it to even just watch a bit of star trek but then just bombarded <laughs> with all this nonsense do you know what i mean and they've they're bringing out a new um series which i've commented on already on my twitter um and it's called he's expecting oh it sounds a brand lovely new it's, yes, it sounds brilliant. Um, and my point was, yeah, Netflix shares are falling. I wonder why. Um, it's because of stuff like this as well. It all adds up. Um, so, and it says, when a successful an ad executive who's got it all figured out becomes <laughs> pregnant, he's forced to confront social he, inequities uh, he'd never considered before. I'm, he, he, I don't he. want to watch the trailer. Personally. No, we're watching I'm, the trailer. Sure we're watching the trailer, we're Olivia. To, aren't we? There's no way we're not um, watching Pregnant Dude trailer. <laughs> Let's throw that up, please. But, Keep us on screen as to not... This is not copyright YouTube. <laughs> this is fair use. Let's get the audio. It's Let's play use. it. Let's see what we got here. I've not seen this. Oh, it's Japanese. 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 Oh, it's Wait, so he's just a straight man? Okay, this is completely different, Lewis. Okay. That's so Japanese, the... それ男が言うやつ。中絶同意書。秋の言ってること私はその辺の男ども all right, I think we've seen enough. Um, we've seen enough. Kind of man gets pregnant. It's just... Here's the thing. This seems more like a movie that would have come out pre-social justice and everything because this is a straight man. As lame as it is, a straight man becomes a woman and he's or he's pregnant and he f sees all the imbalances and how hard it is to be a woman. As much as that's silly, that probably would have came out, you know, before all the social justice stuff came out. Maybe the Japanese audiences aren't ready for a transgender person. That's what I thought it was going to be. But it is just a straight guy getting pregnant. I think it's a story that's been told before. I mean, the movie Junior was a comedy. Junior. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Arnold Schwarzenegger say. and Danny DeVito. So it's a concept that I think has been done a few times. And mm. I don't know. I'm not really that opposed to this. I think it's going to be... Like a sort of thing like, oh, it's so hard to be a woman and, and people treat you this way. But with the abortion stuff in there, I'm still I'm still thinking it's going to be a Japanese social justice movie. Whereas a Western culture, full-blown social justice movie, that would have been a transgender person, I promise you. Well, I don't so know. So we're going to have to watch know, it. Andrew. Yeah, I, <laughs> I mean, I won't. Well, we we will be, Lewis. We'll personally. be doing a watch party together, don't you worry. <laughs> Well, I'll be choosing a different film, thanks. Um, but uh, no, I'm not. I'm not too sure. I, I, I think with Netflix's directions in the past, and it's, it's, you know, it, they've already set the tone. They have set the their their entire company on their way of wanting to push uh, their own sort of um, styled TV series and films towards their audience. They know what they're doing. They know exactly what they're doing <laughs> to strike up a Netflix exclusive. And it happens to be even the language cis gendered male or oh, whatever, cis, cis male, um, even all of that, which which, you know, was was birthed here in the West. And now the, the Japanese are using it now. 
um, in in this in this particular series. No, you can clear. I, I'm seeing straight through it. Is that a Heineken no. commercial or what was it? Where Japanese have always borrowed stuff from America, jeans, baseball, and now beer or mm. something like that. It must have been. Budweiser or something. I don't know. And now cisgenderism. That's right. Well, Netflix isn't even that good anymore. If we want the real, real talk, Lewis, Netflix isn't that good anymore. Everybody's seen most of the things that have been on it. I go to Amazon Prime first now for more up-to-date movies, better movies. Netflix will have comedy specials. They'll have good stuff, but I don't know. With Amazon Prime, I get, you know, faster shipping. It's not a commercial for Amazon Prime. Um... But I don't know. I think most people would probably agree, and that's probably why Netflix's stock is tumbling a little bit, because so you get social justice stuff, or you get movies you've already seen before. You can watch your reruns of The Office. Of uh, they don't even have Family Guy or Friends anymore. Uh, Seinfeld's on there. If you mention Star Trek, mm. and uh, since we're on the Netflix topic, don't forget to tune into Downton Abbey is on Netflix. Lewis is in season two, episodes three to five, in the kitchen. He's no, one of the I'm kitchen not. aides in the background. Don't be shy, Lewis. It's okay. Just peddling, peddling Russian disinformation. There. Um, now I've lost my train of thought. Thank you, Lewis. Season Good. two, episodes three Good. to five. Um, but I, I think there's reasons why Netflix is tumbling a little bit, and it's because of their content. If they're going to keep pushing social justice stuff, then people, look, there's so many other things out there. What I don't really like is these like cable packages where it's like you can choose six channels you wouldn't normally watch and put them together and still get commercials, and that's a new cable package. It, cable is dead, and I wish it would stop trying. So if you don't like Netflix, there's so many other options like Hulu, Amazon, probably HBO Max is better than, than that at this point with all the great HBO shows. HBO can sponsor me, I don't care. But if we want more content that we're going to agree with, we have to support it. And I think moving forward, less and less people are going to support Netflix. You don't have to agree with everything, but like you said, their exclusive content is Japanese guy gets pregnant and has trouble with getting an abortion and such. Yeah, I mean, it's like, you know, when you marry, like, your wife, you're not you're not supposed to be into, like, all of what she's into. Do you know what I mean? It's roughly <laughs> around 70%. Do you know what I mean? You still love her. Do you know what I mean? It's, yes. it's, it's similar. That's that's the best analogy I can come up with. It's pretty so good, if you Lewis. Are you 70%, married? Sure. Uh, not yet. Not yet. Wow. That's mm, ladies. Yet. Let's move over to some no. British news, speaking of Lewis's uh, love life. And we can go to, uh, we'll, we'll start off at wonderful Wimbledon. And I was once asked when I went into an interview at a sports company, the four major tennis tournaments, I think I got them all, the Australian Open, the French Open, Wimbledon, and the U.S. Open. And now Wimbledon is banning all Russian and Belarusian players, of course, because Belarus sided with Russia. They didn't really have a choice. Russia just sort of like, we're coming in here and we have missile silos here, it turns out. And now they're barring them for what reason, Lewis? Well, for being Russian <laughs> once again. Um, more Russia phobia. Um, classic Russia phobia. Really showing his uh, midriff here. We keep here. seeing this. Yeah. What does it say here? Tennis players from Russia and Belarus will not be allowed to compete at this year's Wimbledon due to Moscow's invasion of Ukraine. It's not Russia, it's just Moscow, apparently. That's right. Um, the Grand Slams organizers All England Lawn Tennis Club said in a statement <laughs> on Wednesday. All England Lawn oh. Tennis Club. <laughs> who wrote this? I, you know Can what? we scroll I up and see know. who wrote this? Or did they take it from somewhere? They took it from Reuters, of course. This is like, <laughs> you know, for better or for worse, uh, Pierre Polyev, as he pronounces his own name incorrectly, last night was saying how he talked about CBC will just get articles from other companies and passed off as their own, and that can be counted as Canadian content for the UK and US viewers. Canadian broadcasting requires that 35% of your content be Canadian content, and somehow that passes for it uh, in the digital space. So what Toronto Sun does here, and a lot of these these massive newspaper and website companies, they just share articles. They'll just post this Reuters article. Yahoo, you'll notice, does a lot of it. Uh, they get a lot from CNN, CBC, Siphon, CNN. So all you have to do is open up a propaganda pipeline, and it flows downward. 
and you get one person writing something and all of a sudden it's going to 10 different outlets because they don't have the money to pay for their, their own writers or because they just want to keep that pro sweet, sweet propaganda flowing and it's easier to just take it for somebody else. So Toronto Sun taking these biased Reuters articles, uh, it's pretty funny to me, I guess. Like you guys have writers, just pay them to write articles. And Reuters said yesterday, I believe it was, that they've been unbiased. You can find that on my Twitter page, Olivia. They've been unbiased for like a hundred and something years. Uh, I'm just looking at the screen here. Scroll down a bit. It should be close to the top. Reuters related. Keep going. It'll be a bunch of pictures. <laughs> uh, there it is. Yeah, so if we want to put this up, <laughs> the first image is Reuters. And I know we're on a bit of a tangent here, but can't let them get away with it. So <laughs> Reuters post yesterday. Click on that first picture with the quotes on it. Uh, delivering unbiased agenda-free news for 170 years. We'll tell the real stories for every street, every city, every corner of the world. Reuters the source. Yeah, so, yeah. And then go to the next <laughs> image. So I just started searching keywords for Reuters. January 25th, their own post. So it's not just like an article from somebody else. It's their own post promoting pronouns. Now state the pronoun. Pe <laughs> many people on Twitter and LinkedIn state their pronouns. Of course they do. Oh. And now go to the next do. one. More unbiased coverage. Their own post again. As concerns grow over racial bias and AI, BLM co-founder <laughs> urged the technology sector to act fast against perpetuating racism, racism in systems such as facial recognition. So Reuters, extremely unbiased, as we can see. And that all ties Absolutely. back to the Toronto Sun printing stuff from Reuters instead of paying their own writers. And we will move mm. on to more be good news, I guess. We've had Japanese pregnant guy on uh, Netflix. You can call it bad news. But um, there was a family. It's called the Family Sex Show, Lewis, in the UK. Yes. I think this was in England, yes? Unfortunately so. Um, <laughs> it's I just no comment. Unbelievable. Um, so, yeah, basically this show uh, was cancelled, which is fantastic. And... Um, this is a great thing because we shouldn't be funding and we shouldn't be promoting anything to do with abusing children or grooming children, which they are doing. So what this is, it's a basically a, a theatrical type style play where these adults are basically showing to five year olds and over um, basically, and their quote from them, by the way, this isn't me saying this, this is from their quote, saying that it's an alternative to pornography, mm. basically. And this is to five year olds um, plus. So this has been cancelled due to massive backlash and good, basically. And they're starting to use the whole, oh, well, you know, it's cancel culture. The right does cancel culture now. Like, you know, it's not just on the left, it is, it's on the right as well. And they're cancelling. No. If you're grooming children, this is not anything to do with cancel culture. It has nothing to do with it at all. But um, if we go through the, the article, if we go back up to the top, just so I can read um, what it says. A sex education theater show <laughs> aimed at children ah. um, has been canceled after the venue said it had received unprecedented threats and abuse. Um, the family sex show fe featuring topics such as consent, pleasure, and queerness mm. was due to be performed at Bristol's tobac Tobacco Factory in May. Uh, the creators of the show, who said they had also received threats, uh, have now cancelled its whole tour. And uh, more than 38,000 people signed a petition calling for it to be axed. I was one of those 38,000 people signing that petition to call it to be axed because it's it's disgusting. We shouldn't be having this at all. This shouldn't even be something that we, we should be even talking about. It shouldn't be happening. But, um, yeah, some great news, some white pillage there. <laughs> so I'm very happy. White pilled with Blackpool. Um, <laughs> if it were something, if it was just straight transgender stuff for adults, I would say let them have their weird show. If people want to go pay, pay to see that, go ahead. You want to you wanna get weird? then go ahead and get weird, as they would say on the show Workaholics. But when you're openly saying we are going to target this at, on, at children with queerness and pleasure, you want to teach five-year-olds about your sexual identity, your sexual preference, and masturbation or sex, 
Yeah, you should be canceled because it's weird. You want to know why it's weird? Because why do you need children? What is the desire? And it's the same thing with the Florida bill. What is the desire you have to teach children about this? There's very mm. few answers that can come of it. And I'm glad everybody's finally agreeing to put a stop to this stuff. And it needs to go further. It needs to go all the way up yeah. to teenagers. When I was in high school, yeah. I knew what a transgender person was. I knew what a sex change was. I knew what sex was. This is going to be a terrible clip if somebody takes it out of context. But you don't need <laughs> you don't need your sweaty gym teacher, who is our health teachers in high school. You don't need them to tell you about this stuff. What did we learn? I don't know what we learned. Mm. I don't think we learned anything. You can show the how about you can show the birthing video in high school. That's fine. Oh yes. B basic anatomy. You can do that. But I didn't learn anything new from it in high school, like from sex education in high school. I don't know if you need that in school. I really don't know. These children have the internet, which we real we kind of did back then. We had it. We weren't Mm -hmm. educating ourselves with it we were playing uh starcraft if you Skype. will that was more of a dave thing you know in the writer's room <laughs> good but do you really think that these teenagers there's more they can learn from mr snuffleupagus the the weirdo gym teacher who sweats a lot i don't think so it's a, it's a conversation i think that needs to be had of do we need it at all in schools i would put mm. go on the side of no i don't think so there could be some stuff for high school students i think but if I had to choose one way or the other, I would say no. But if you want to show kids, and they are kids, by the way, as you can tell by when they get into college mm -hmm. and they're upwards of 22 and they're still acting like children nowadays because nobody's allowed to be wrong and everybody's you know, feelings have to be put into account. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't think anything apart from basic anatomy and you know, the birthing of a child needs to be shown. I don't know about you. That's probably a, a different it's, podcast. It's just inappropriate. <laughs> It's just it's just in a, inappropriate, and all I'm going to say is God bless Ron DeSantis. That's all I'm going to say. He's the only person I've seen, or the only politician that I've seen properly um, in the Western Hemisphere. Um, there's probably a few others, but th their names uh, skip my mind. But um, Ron DeSantis is fighting the good fight over in uh, Florida with this stuff because it is... <laughs> It is going through all of the institutions, all the educational institutions with all this nonsense as well. It's not just in theatres. It's not just something that, you know, this lobby wants to really project onto children. It's happening, yeah, like you said, within schools, within primary schools, within secondary schools. This wasn't this wasn't like a thing when I was growing up at all. Um, you know, at all. Like we learned basic anatomy. Um, we learned about, you know, of course, reproduction and how it worked and, you know, what happens. But it doesn't go into graphic, like, detail. <laughs> it doesn't become like these people, what they're saying is an alternative for pornography. That's mental. That is just utterly insane. And it's it's deprived and, and derailed into this horrible, nefarious styled, I don't know, perversion is the only way I can I can call it. Um, I can yeah. Uh, sorry, I'm I'm just so glad that finally that that there are some people with a lot of common sense and that have turned around and said no, we don't want this. We want to protect our own children. The state does not own your child, neither does the school. Okay, so that's that's one thing I think that that parents need to start get like gaining more control of, is that teachers don't own your own child, and it should be up to the parents. The parents should have more rights than the school to implement what they want their kid to learn, basically. And that's how I feel. You can disagree with me on that all you want, but I believe that the parent should have more rights than the teachers trying to basically indoctrinate them with this filth, essentially. Yeah, and I agree with you there, Lewis. I even was speaking to one of the BLM leaders, which is on my show tomorrow night, if you want to tune in. And he was saying along the lines of, and, and by no means am I connecting him to these, you know, the grooming class at all. He didn't say anything like that. But he said the child belongs to the community. And I don't agree with that at all. Just like no. I, don't, I don't agree with the child belonging to the school or the state, which is what a politician in Canada said a few months ago on the East Coast. The child belongs to the state, uh, which was really creepy. Awful. Yes. The East Coast is a crazy place, Lewis. But uh, we it? got, it is, lots of rain. 
but you're used to that, mm. aren't you? I'm it, used it, to that. It never seems to rain as much as they say it does in your videos, or is that just because you don't film in the rain? I just, yeah, get lucky, and uh, I just send all very... It's all actually a green screen, really. Every video I send to you, the I'm architect. in front of a green screen. vis I am. I am. And uh, ergo... Mm. I would like to see you recreate mm -hmm. the music video Yellow by Coldplay. Just walk around the, the <laughs> beach in uh, black in pool, maybe. Soaking in yep. rain. You'd be wearing the same shirt. Yes, and Blackpool has a beach called Blackpool Pleasure Beach as well, is, is what it's called. So, uh, yeah, that, that would be a funny video. This guy knew that Blackpool was the vacation carnival destination of England. There's a Ferris wheel there, is there I don't there know how not? you know that. I think you just play too much FIFA, mate. Uh, they don't show the beach in FIFA, okay, mate? Look at this. Oh, Look know. how, like, Olivia, being the great producer that she is, wants to show my genius. You can put that on screen. She's bringing up Pleasure Beach. I didn't know that's what it was <laughs> called. Lewis Blackpool. Yes, that's what it's Pleasure with Lewis Blackpool. You should go there. Why don't? This is what I don't understand, Lewis. The North American audience just wants to see English things. You go in front of a soccer right. stadium. You go to Pleasure Beach. The background and the ambiance. You could be doing streeters about any given political topic. The imagery will be, it's like things, colors that when a blind person can see colors for the first time. That's what it is to us. It's fun, you know, British stuff that we've never seen before because it doesn't look like where we come from. And, you know, you could be doing that. You could be doing this, what this guy's doing. What is that, Olivia? Okay, it changed. It was a guy like ride, riding and sailing <laughs> something else. More British well, news, though. Oh, did you have something to say there? <laughs> no, I was no. I, I was just gonna say I thought you wanted me to go to Blackpool because it, it slightly sounds like my name, which uh, you know That's everyone seems reason. to use. Well, we yeah. know your name is fake. Um, growing up. Uh, okay. Yeah. Um, he didn't. <laughs> and if you're wondering, he didn't use his real name in Downton Abbey. That's why he thinks he's got plausible de deniability there. The LBC Lewis, which of course is the London Broadcasting Corporation. Indeed. Wow. Indeed. See, look at this knowledge I'm dropping here. Uh, who is this woman on it? She's basically bashing the country of England, of course, while living there, saying it's a bad country, it's economically poor and ideologically poor. Who is this woman we're about to show? This is Natasha Devon. Um, I don't know much about um, her previous career uh, other than landing a good spot on LBC. Um, but she makes the case after hearing about the Rwandan scheme over here in the UK where illegal migrants who make their way over from Calais um, and enter the country illegally are now to be processed in East Africa in Rwanda. It's a new scheme set up by the government. Um, you know, there's debate on whether it's going to work or whether, you know, there's reasons behind it might not work or it will work. Um, but she gives her take and basically says that we're this horrible, silly island, as she calls it, and um, we're cutting off our nose in, um, to spite our stupid racist faces mm. so yeah I, so I'd she's like saying to listen to more the move the move to process them in another place is a racist move she's basically basi uh, basically saying that this country isn't great that it's not um people aren't flooding the gates to try and come here because it is actually an awful silly island as she calls and uh that we're just racist we're all horrible racist people basically Let's see what she has to say. I think we have a clip here. I can tell you what I expect the government to do. I expect the government to see it more as a resourcing crisis than one of finance. If we're going to talk about people coming into this country, we know study after study has shown that they contribute a net benefit to the economy. The problem is, as Peter Tatchell said earlier, that people who initially come to this country aren't allowed to work, which therefore puts a strain on the, the social benefit system. But if we allowed them to work and contribute to the economy straight away, we're struggling for for nurses, for other hospital that? workers, you for cleaners, for for in all kinds of for lorry drivers in all kinds of industries. Taxi drivers, we wow. are struggling. I think You're we need to acknowledge that we're we're not a great country that everybody wants train? to come to. We're a silly little island that is struggling in almost every industry, and this is a classic example of where we're cutting off to our nose to spite our stupid racist faces. 
There it is. There it is. Um, So I don't know if she knows, but asylum seekers aren't often nurses and doctors. Um, And then she would probably consider somebody else racist for saying that they should work as uh, lorry drivers. Of course, these Mm -hmm. are jobs that people who already live in England could do. I don't know what the unemployment rate is there, but I'd imagine there's enough people to do the basic jobs. And this is the classic argument in favor of mass immigration. Justin Trudeau has it. Mm -hmm. Canadian Conservative Party has it. The Biden Democrats have it. We just don't have enough people for these jobs, you guys. Yeah. Here's what happens when you when you don't have enough people for the jobs. Let's say there's a supermarket down the street. They can't find 10 people. What's the first thing you do? You go and look for as many people as you can. You can't. Why won't people Why won't people come here? Oh, this probably doesn't pay enough. Looks like we're going to have to raise the wage. Looks like we're going to have to make less money off of these people. And, and we'll have to shave our profit margin down. When you have less people, the ability to negotiate for a better contract and better salary now appears in front of you. When there is job abundance, there is higher salaries. Just like when there is more houses to choose from, the price of houses come down. So this is a complete lie from, I'll just say morons who align themselves with liberal parties. And not to say that everybody believes in that, but the people who espouse this are. There does not always need to be a massive influx of immigration. Countries have gotten through many decades without masses of immigration. They can they either ha- grow their own population steadily or they do not. I mean, I don't know how much immigration you guys think, <laughs> you guys, how, many, how much immigration people think that Japan has or that Iceland has. It's not a lot. They're doing pretty well for themselves. And this mm. idea that we must, as Canada, I'll use as an example, we must bring in 400,000 to 600,000 immigrants every year or else our economy will crumble is a lie. They never tried not doing it. Ever since Pierre Elliott Trudeau, they wanted massive immigration numbers. They wanted it from certain countries. Pierre Elliott Trudeau didn't want, he didn't want so many European uh, immigrants. He wanted more from other countries. So he didn't make it even. He just completely flipped it in the other direction. It should be even across Mm. the board, but the idea that you need to have a giant influx of immigrants in order to sustain an economy is wildly inaccurate. And at the same time, they think they they complain about wages being low, they complain about job numbers, they complain about, you know, people's economic freedom like this woman's doing. But maybe you should just let the market fix itself once in a while. Maybe you should just try it. What's going on in our Western countries in terms of inflation clearly has to do with something. It's not just inflation that just happens, you know, every once in a while. I think in the U.S. they're at a 40-year high. You see the mm-hmm. gas prices or the petrol prices. It's $1.84 <laughs> here this morning. It's crazy. It's out of control. Guess what happens if workers are scarce? They have to pay the workers more. Nobody ever does it. They say, oh, people who work here don't want to do the job. Maybe, Lewis, if I could make a, a large amount of <laughs> dollars working at a gas station, don't you think a 20-year-old would do that? Like, don't you think a 20-year-old mm-hmm. who could make like 20-something dollars an hour working at a Walmart? And this is happening. This is not just my theory. There are places in the United States, like Texas and some of the other um, states, who don't get, you know, all of the uh, illegal immigrants pushed into their communities, where you can make $20 an hour at a fast food restaurant. It's a real thing. You can look, and it's been happening for the last couple of years. You can look up McDonald's raises prices because of lack of workers or a big increase in, in fast food prices, uh, fast food uh, job prices. So it is happening when places that make a lot of money, like a major corporation like a McDonald's or Walmart, and people complain that they don't pay enough, they will pay mm-hmm. more to find people. They'll, yeah. they'll have their robots, but there are some jobs that robots cannot do yet, I'm afraid to tell you. So I'm in favor, Lewis, last thing. I'm in favor of, you know, giving it a try to not, you know, just say yes to everybody. The U.S. brings in a million people plus a year. Canada wants to bring in almost as many. The real reason is because they want voters and they want to be able to grow the economy and steal more money from people. But the reality is, is that you don't have to do that, no matter what they tell you. And I'd like to see mm. where this woman gets her ideas from. Yeah, absolutely. Well, the the dangerous thing about this as well is Natasha is advocating for uh, people who are undocumented. We don't know who they are. We don't necessarily know where they've come from. Um, And she wants to bypass them to go straight into a working environment, Um, whether it be uh, um, lorry drivers, um, whether it be some other kind of um, very trade-like skill, um, and just to push them in, push them through the door, undocumented, uh, unexperienced as well. 
um, because, of course, there's different types of safety procedures here in the UK to other countries and especially non-Western countries. The safety aspect of, of the work environment is very, very different. Um, and she wants to just bypass all of that and just go, yeah, no worries. Um, yeah, just sign here and you can start. I think personally, there is nothing, and I've said this before, and I said this in my recent report, I believe that there is nothing compassionate or progressive to exploit um, for cheap foreign labor, basically, or anyone for political votes. There is nothing compassionate or progressive about it. That should be totally condemned on both sides. But for some weird reason, it seemed to, it, from both sides, I mean, especially in, in my government over here in the UK, both sides are playing that. Both sides are really um, playing that ball. So it's not just a left or right thing over here for us. Both sides are doing it. Mm -hmm. And that's what's quite um, disturbing because, of course, us, the working people, we we are the ones that get um, burdened the most from mass immigration and, and all of this. We're the ones that, that take the hit, um, whether it be through job of opportunities, whether it be through um, safety aspects, whether it be through just regular um, things such as housing, welfare, um, economy, lots and lots of different things, just to name it off the top of my head. But yet this advocation of just bypassing all of that to people that we don't know who are undocumented um, and haven't been properly vetted is absurd. I mean, that's putting so many people at risk. It doesn't matter where they come from. It's it's putting so many people at risk. And this idea of this open border policy and no person is illegal. If I went to Dover now, right, and just got a boat, paid someone, got a boat and, and just went over to, to Calais in France without a passport, do you think I'm going to be arrested? And the, fr the French authorities are just going to be like, oh, OK, well, you, you might as well come in. We'll, we'll give you everything. That's not going to happen, is it? Um, they'll find out who I am, why I've decided to come across, and they'll sanction, they'll punish me. And, and that's just how it goes. But for some reason, it's, it's now fair game um, for, for certain types of people from other, other areas of the world. And that's, that's wrong. That's really, really wrong. And um, there's nothing compassionate or, um, yeah, there's nothing compassionate about it at all. I just don't understand. This is from my recent report as well. Um, and it's just it just keeps happening. I think it was over 64,000 um, illegal um, migrants came over. Uh, from Calais to Dover last year alone. And the facilities that they have to vet um, the illegals over here just keep expanding and getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And um, it's almost like nothing's being done at all. Here's the dinghies as well, the dinghy graveyard, where the home office and the police would seize the boats and just leave them in a car park. Why are and they... As you can see, the... Um, yeah. Uh, Why are they parking it's... them like cars? Like, they're made of rubber. You can pile them on top of each other. <laughs> Well, that's what they've done. Those are piles. Those are about um, 12 piles high, 8 oh, to 12 piles high. Yeah, so um, that's, what, that's what's worrying. And, you know, the, the Home Office will hardly will try and clear them out every week, but it's, it's just never-ending. Lincoln Jay as well has done a report when he came over here in, in the UK and saw it for himself of how detrimental this has been, and this has been continuing on for years, and nothing's been done. So, yeah, I think... Going back to Natasha's uh, point of bypassing um, <laughs> basically undocumented citizens uh, is just, is yeah, it's completely irregular. It's completely illogical. And it's just, it's, it's dangerous is what it is. And the other thing is that these migrants from Calais, they're not French nationals. These are people who've traveled through all these no. different countries because they want england's social programs i believe yes. the way you're so according to is it amnesty international or the un you're supposed to go to the next closest safe country correct and they're supposed to take you in now these people aren't stupid yes. they're going for the place that fr has the most free stuff and it only yeah. the only types of countries that are brave enough to say no to people are eastern european and islamic countries you know, you know turkey's mm. turkey's not going to take in all these people saudi arabia is not going to take in all these people neither is Mor like these are places where people can live like they're not war torn countries you may disagree with their politics and i certainly do but you but like you could go to egypt you, there's a whole section of north africa that are livable countries and there's a whole section of you know the middle east 
least that are livable countries, and then Southern Europe and Eastern Europe that are much closer to them as opposed to going up through mid Central Europe to the top of France and then crossing uh, the body of water into England. And then we're supposed to just say, hey, that's fine that you, you traveled how many miles to get here, and mm -hmm. why did you do that? Because it's safer than Switzerland? Or is it that Switzerland won't take you in? Is it safer than Portugal no. and France or, or Egypt and Morocco? Or they just won't let you in? So I'm sorry yeah. to tell you that well, th this is economic migration. Yeah. And, and not, to, and not to, add, uh, to add, sorry, to your point, um, there are migrants, illegal migrants, making TikTok videos of them on the <laughs> boat on the way to Dover. Um, and there's no women and children there in, in all of these videos that, that they keep making. They have mobile phones and they're, they're given one for free when they come here anyway, um, because the state will provide that. The Home Office um, will provide that. And you just see this never ending cycle. And, you know, there are people that have spoken up against it and said, look, this is wrong. Something needs to be done. And Priti Patel gives the, the big talk about it, but there's no action. We finally see some sort of deal, and then now the far left are saying that um, it's cruel and unkind because they're being taken to um, to Rwanda to be processed. Now, I don't think that's going to deter the, these crossings, personally. I don't think that it's going to make a dent. Um, however, I mean, to finally see some sort of action, coincidentally, straight after a political blunder in the, the <laughs> House of Commons with uh, Boris Johnson and Rishi Sunak being fined for lockdown. Um, and coincidentally, our local elections are coming up in May. So, you know, let's enact policies that, of course, um, our voters want. But we just keep seeing this over and over again. And if you call this out, you're immediately condemned as sort of this far right, horrible person that just doesn't care there are schemes already set up um for people who are in genuine need of asylum that there, there is you know you can go and look that up on the, the home office or the uk government website yourself there already is um schemes to help people um it's it's and it actually does them a disservice if illegals are continuing to to come and it sort of it sort of takes how do, how do I explain this, Andrew? It, it takes the sort of um, the oomph into, into helping people who are in genuine need because you want to help people who are in, genuinely in need. Um, and it's kind of like it's, it's gotten to this point where it's now asylum shopping, like you mentioned, <laughs> with, um, with um, a lot of the, the economic migrants, which is totally different to someone who is trying to seek asylum away from, from a war-torn country. But like you said... France isn't a war-torn country. There are many of European countries that um, are housing um, uh, people who need to seek asylum. But like you said, it's just it's just a case of finding the best deal now. And we are giving the best deal here in the UK, where you get a free mobile phone, you get a, a you get um, an opportunity to get on the property ladder, you even get business grants to start up your own business, and it just keeps happening. And no wonder. Um, because you can easily just keep that going. You can keep that circle going and keep the, the people smugglers happy. And, you know, we could talk about this for hours, uh, really, but mm -hmm. the, what's what's troubling the most is if you call this stuff out and you say that what Natasha Devon is saying on L LBC about not fettering or not vetting undocumented people and bringing them straight into the workforce um, is dangerous, you're then told that you're this horrible, bigoted racist far-right person which is just simply false and it's simply untrue um and like i said these people are the the most uncompassionate people these people <laughs> these people want or encourage the crossings they encourage people to make these treacherous journeys which is so wrong so wrong and that's all i've got to say about it Okay, I want to get to this Taylor Loren stuff before we go and then show a clip of the event I was at last night. Taylor Loren, if you guys didn't know, and Ian Miles Chong has been all over this. We can throw it up when you're ready, Olivia. This is a reporter for the Washington Post who has been on television twice in the last four months complaining about harassment she's received, about how she gets mean messages and mean tweets. She said it's never okay to go to anyone's house. What you're looking at is a picture of her at the relative 
of the account Libs of TikTok's house. So she couldn't find out who the real person was. So she went to relatives of hers place. The real person is now in hiding, hasn't shown her face. All for starting a Twitter page that shows, you know, liberals of TikTok. People talking about their pronouns and their genders and six spirits and the people that live inside their head. Not joking about that. It's out there. And she comes out. She's crying on TV saying how difficult it is to be her, how difficult it is to be a reporter. And here's the thing, Lewis. Everybody, at, really, take a look at the Rebel News inbox on any given day. Being, having mean things said about you on Twitter, as an adult, you're, you're expected to be able to handle that. As a person who willingly puts themselves mm -hmm. out there, you put your name on articles, you go on TV and cry, you're putting yourself out there. Crimes are crimes, and they're unacceptable. If there's death threats, you know, threats of anything that's illegal, or they're making moves to try to show your information, that's bad. But this woman yeah. linked to this person's address, and now they have to leave their house. Now they can't be there. We hear this all the time from CBC and CTV reporters, how hard their life is, how much mean tweets and mean messages they got. Bro, take a look at the mm. Rebel News inbox any single day. Take a look at what yeah. act like reporters of Rebel News have to deal with. We can go West Coast, East Coast if you want. Dre Humphrey got manhandled by the RCMP Trudeau security. Uh, Mocha Bazurgan got punched in the face at an Israel-Palestine protest. Um, Lincoln J., Got, has been arrested. Efron's been arrested. David Menzies has been arrested, bitten by dogs, beaten up by the RCMP. Sheila Gunn Reed got punched at a women's rally. Alexa Lavoie got shot with a gas canister. How often do they actually complain about how mean everything is to them? Nobody ever does it mm. because nobody ca nobody cares about you getting mean tweets to you. It's just, this just isn't a thing. You can look in anybody's inbox who's in the spotlight, and people are going to say mean things to you. A lot of people do it to you, Lewis, for some reason in particular. Maybe it's because you're the only rebel in England, but you get a lot of hate publicly on Twitter and in your messages. But for these yeah. ju these journalists who cry every single day about how rough it is, it's not true. You, if you work for a company that, that lies all the time and misrepresents it and you can't present your true personality and your true feelings, then you're going to get a lot more hate than anybody else was, would. Because guess what? Wolf Blitzer's on CNN, and Wolf Blitzer isn't yelled at in the streets because he's just Wolf Blitzer. He's News Robot version 3.0. But when you're Jake Tapper or Chris Cuomo or Taylor Lorenz, people are going to going to disagree with what you do and when you go on knocking on people's relatives doors and cross all these boundaries that you yourself said that nobody should ever do guess what people are going to mm. say mean things about you but the journalists who say how hard their life is because you know people say mean things to them on twitter and the internet and emails bro i can send you my password and you can look at the inbox yourself <laughs> f-bombs <laughs> J bombs, N bombs, anything you want. Yeah. I've seen it within the last week. So don't tell me how horrible your life is being a journalist. Because guess what? Out of these major pu publications like the Washington Post and the Toronto Sun, they get paid just to write articles. Like they've got this, this, like all they have to do is sit in their cushy office and write an article every once in a while. It's not a real job. It's propped up by the government. It's propped up by Jeff Bezos in America. It's propped up by the Trudeau government in Canada and the, these giant corporations like Post Media. It's not a realistic. They're not living in reality is what I'm trying to say, Lewis. They, they cry and they cry and they cry again because it's easier to get attention for being a victim, as we all know, than it is for getting attention for doing actual good work, and now she's gone and done both, accused people of doing something to her and then doing that to somebody else. Yeah, and, you know, it's funny because what was she expecting becoming a journalist? I mean, you know, what, what, do, you ex what do you expect in terms of um, <laughs> if you're going to put your name out there and you're going to say you're going to call people out or you're going to really, you know, gun for for you know bringing the bringing stories out or you're going to talk about particular politicians or if you swing in a certain um way in terms politically uh you're going to get people that are not going to like you you're not going to please everyone and you have to take that then to be to go on some sort of tv show or something i think it was some sort of show yeah. wasn't it um yeah and and start start with the crying and saying how horrible her life is um 
you know, and it's it's unbelievable how, you know, the, the victim mentality that you can go on and start crying and start doing all that. I would be totally sympathetic if it was something like, they are doxing me. They are harassing my family. They are threatening my friends, um, threatening my loved ones. They're trying to stop me from working, earning an income. This has all happened to many, many, many people, especially on the conservative side. And not to rule out that it hasn't happened on, on the left as well, but predominantly from what I've seen, it's, it's predominantly on the conservative side. But you know what I've seen? I've seen people just go, water off the dock, duck's back. We're going to have to just try and fight like hell and just keep carrying on and all that. And to, to, to go on national television and say that, or to go on some sort of chat show and say that, and, and you know, say that, oh, it's so hard, it's so difficult, I'm having a hard time, all of this. She says she and has PTSD. The f- yeah, and all this nonsense. And then to turn up then... And do exactly what you are claiming is done to you, to someone else, is not only immensely hypocritical, but it's so disingenuous, it's so horrific that, you know, it just it completely derails your entire integrity as a journalist, as a person, really, in my view. And all the sympathy just goes completely goes because i do have sympathy for people who are going through tough times i do i know it's like you know being um not harassed i I wouldn't say i'm i've been harassed but you know having horrible messages sent it can get you down right and if you get it a lot you sort of start to think oh you know bloody hell i'm this is a bit too much but you got to say to yourself war off the ducks back it's just noise online stuff on your phone right that's nothing. That's completely nothing. In the real world, it's completely different. But, you know, it comes to a point where you just go, right, water off a duck's back, carry on. You just got to, you know, this is just noise. It's nothing. And you carry on doing your things and you have the people that want to support you. And, you know, I get loads of people just wanting to talk all the time and you do as well. And it's, it, it spurs you on. It keeps you going. It keeps you wanting to talk and, you know, fight like the good fight. And looking at other our, our colleagues as well who have actually gone through physical abuse and wanting to still wake up in the morning and carry on. I mean, that's so important. That's that's inspirational, personally. But this is unbelievable that you can just go on some sort of show, um, you know, cry or whatever, and then do exactly what you hate to another person and try and ruin someone else's life for your own um, journalistic or political gain. It's It's disgusting. It's unbelievable. Tucker Carlson pointed out that the way they got the information was through a group that's funded by the German government. So if you guys haven't heard that part, then go ahead and watch the Tucker Carlson uh, little bit he did on it last night. He had the libs of TikTok creator um, by phone. Rebel News. Mm. Rebel News is a chief social media personality, Yakov Pollock, also followed by libs of TikTok. So big shout out to him there. Good work, Yankee. Mm. Um, keeping Good up work. with that stuff. Um, and I want to show this clip. Speaking of people, you know, coming up to us in person, I was at the Pierre Polyev event last night. Some things happened. Um, there's me in my cool guy jacket. Um, I don't, I haven't seen this clip, but I w- just want to say on piggybacking on what you just said is that people did come up to us in person and people have yelled at me in person. I left myself out of the last thing. Um, I've been surrounded by, you know, the weird people who protested at city hall and stayed there for two weeks. And like, it's just, it's so for lack Mm. of a better term, like weak to just be, Oh, the mean messages I get online. Oh, you guys want to, you guys want to want Ezra to screenshot you his emails or his inbox. I'm I'm sure there's some stuff in there. Minutely. Mm. (laughs) Let's go ahead and show this clip of Pierre Paul. I didn't want to answer my question last night. You guys. You know, we're just, okay. good. Okay, just good. We're, we're, we're not doing interviews now because we're having my lineup. Uh, sure. But if you want to just get a quick shot, you can do that. Sure, she just invited us in, so that's why yeah. I was here. Perfect. All right, nice to meet you, Andrew. Yeah, we're just, uh, we, we, the only reason is that we've got so many people waiting and we don't want to keep people waiting too long, but I'm, okay. I'm, everyone's welcome. Though. All right, thanks a lot. If you want to get a shot, thank you. Here? All right. Thanks so much, guys. Uh, phone, phone, phone. Invited back in, no question, though. Excuse me. 
So what happened here, Lewis, is we went in. <laughs> you look confused. I'm very confused because what happened is we went in. They knew our camera was there. Let's try this again. So no questions, brought back in, but told we could ask a question, but no questions again. So I don't really know what's going on. <laughs> so we went in there. We had our cameras out. We had two cameras, my microphone there. Um, I wanted to ask Pierre Poilov one question. I had th three in my mind, maybe two. Thought I was only going to get in one, maybe two. Um, this has happened before. Dre Humphrey and Matt Brevner got questions in. Maybe I should have just asked it. That's in hindsight. Maybe I should have just asked. Um, so we go in there. Their security or whomever it is says, oh, there's no questions here. We're like, we, people have done it before. When are we supposed to ask questions? And he said, get out. I don't want to have to escalate this. Uh, so they kick us out. The guy tries to push me out. Little guy. I wasn't worried. I just said, don't touch me. Um, they push us out. And as I'm doing what I just did there, they, they come out and they pull us back in. They say, oh, sorry about that, guys. Um, come on in. You can ask a question. Their PR person's like being overly friendly with me. And I'm just like, and Lincoln saying, oh, we need to just ask one question. And she's like, that's fine. Pushes us to the front of the line. And I'm there. And what you didn't see leading up to that is I'm saying just one question, basically. And he's just like, oh, no. And that's where you see it. Oh, we're just only taking uh, <laughs> photos today. If you want to take a photo, we can. He held my arm longer. He's trying to do that power move on you, on me, like Trump does. So I was like, OK. So I was like, OK. Basically, because... Uh, and I agree that I should have just asked the question, but in my mind, I'm thinking, like, if this is how he wants it to look, and he wants just to, you know, they want to pu push us out, pull us back in, and then say no more questions, it's really weird, dude. I don't know what's going on with that, so you'll see that video really soon. And I don't know, Lewis, mm. talking about being afraid of Twitter and uh, other people being mean to you. I think that's what the conservative party is afraid of. I think they're afraid yeah. of if they talk to Rebel News too much, like which is weird because they have already. Um, you know, CBC is going to say something about them. Uh, who was there, by the way? They looked very frightened when I spoke to one of the guys. Um, <laughs> you know, they're going to be afraid of what Twitter says. They're going to be afraid of what people think. And the question I wanted to ask him was how come the conservative party and you yourself didn't stand up more during the lockdowns. You didn't stand up against things. And you're going to get to see the rest of the video, the rest of the exchange, maybe some of the spicier stuff. It's going to be a good video, I think. So shout out to cameraman Mauricio, TV's Lincoln J for being there. And uh, any comments on that before we get to any paid chats before we go? No, I think it's, it's similar to, to over here uh, in terms of conservatives um, not wanting to associate with certain people. I mean, uh, like, well, like we've spoken um, on camera and off air anyway, that, you know, the left and the right here, there's no such thing. They're, they're all blended into one. They're uh, cheeks of the same arse, as I would say. <laughs> um, so, wow. Yeah. So, yeah. Not getting invited for fish and chips by Boris anytime soon, Lewis. Do we have any chats to get to, Olivia? <laughs> Aaron Burton says, keep up the awesome work, guys. Thank you for all you do. Forward three. That's a heart. Rebel. That's I know. A heart, I, mate. I know. <laughs> guys, just thank greater, you, Aaron. That's greater than kind. three, Rebel. Mm. Thank you, Aaron. Go ahead, Lewis. I'll do this one. King7734. Andrew, you're looking good with a haircut. <laughs> Debatable. New glasses. Um, it's New glasses. I'll, I'll, ask, I'll ask again. Do they make those shirts for men? <laughs> how Keep we, the abuse coming, how, please. It was, it's the way to get to me. Compliments disguised, or abuse disguised in compliments. I don't know what women are wearing. Maybe Hillary Clinton would wear this <laughs> shirt with a pantsuit, but uh, the glasses aren't new, so that sounded like David <laughs> Menzies in disguise. I mean, the we glasses are on the some, thumbnail. We need, right, some good polos, right? I think some good polos. Right. We need some out. good bloody polos. Go yeah, on down to the, the pub. Promo. Play that's some darts. 140. Yeah. And then everybody yeah, gets perfect. up and dances. Yeah. <laughs> da, 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 da. We'll <laughs> I love watching that. If Sweden, uh, Cheryl Dawn V, if Sweden had the least restrictions, why are they rioting so much now? Um, actually, I believe that they're rioting because somebody burned a Quran is what's going on right now. Yes. Yes, that is correct. And uh, from what I've read, uh, the people have had enough, as in the people have had enough with people freaking out in their country because uh, they were also right. asylum seekers or and or refugees. Mm. Moving on. Um, 
um is it dilbo is it dilbo back in yes is that how you say it <laughs> i believe so good reference to lord of the rings brilliant 11 dollars. uh thanks to the whole team at rebel news a primary series of truth and regular boosters of sanity please put one dollar of this towards the andrus chapados friendship fund you know um i guess it's finally come to the point in my life lewis where my <laughs> yes. people who watch me um are giving me back what i've given them and it's sort of a sign of somebody who watches me to insult me so i'm happy it makes me happy to read those last two things because it means so you know is, people like are acting like how i would <laughs> act back to me is it is that basically saying that this friendship fun because you you don't have i think that's what friends? it's saying i think that's what it's right. saying i think the people who watch andrew says know that the way to get to me is to give me insults because I'm basically picking on everything at all times. It's what I deserve. True. Please. And yeah, it, you do. And, it's all uh, in I good enjoy... fun, mate. Yeah, that's it, mate. And I enjoy the bullying towards you. It's great. Wow. Are any more bullying, Olivia? No more bullying. Maybe next time we'll just say bully me. Um, we'll put that as a hashtag <laughs> or something. Yes. Rebelnews.com slash livestream is your daily place to get the best feed wherever we're posting it. So you will get it no matter what. And you can sign up for our mailing list there as well. Thank you for everybody watching on Rumble Super, you Odyssey getter. And even the UEist of tubes, Lewis Brackpool out of England. He's coming out with a great reset series. He may be traveling worldly into the atmosphere soon. We don't know yet. We can't tell you where, but stay tuned for that. My show tomorrow night is with... BLM New York co-founder Hawk Newsom and Tatum report writer Eric Butler. Things got a little spicy. They yelled at each other a little bit, called each other idiots. Um, good fun. You'll want to tune into that tomorrow night and the weekend. Leaving us today, thank you, approve, uh, Approver Olivia. I was going to say Approver Olivia. She does approve a lot of things. But Producer Olivia, thank you. And as always, we're going to leave you with some British music. What do we got here, Lewis? <laughs> Is it is it my turn to uh to go to to request? No, but we've got something pulled up here. Oh yes, is it? it let me guess, is it BG? It is. You of did course. last week. This, today's my day. I want some high pitched voice. We've got Taco Bell <laughs> waiting for us. We've got Taco Bell waiting for us at Rebel News, the greatest day ever at Rebel News. Play us out, producer Olivia. BG's live in the seventies. <laughs> Thank you. I have that same leotard. I want that haircut. <laughs> it's basically a monkey singing. <laughs> That's basically Writer Dave, I think. <laughs> It's better live, 100%. They're really hitting those notes. They rocked harder yeah, in the 70s. This is a show right here, us watching old British music. Thanks everybody for watching. See you tomorrow night on my show. Take care.